First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace, peace. All right, tonight's show is going to be on philosophy versus metaphysics, the science of life. And basically what we're going to get into is how philosophy asks the questions but never answers them. Yet metaphysics is part of philosophy, but metaphysics is what gives you the answers. Um, This show basically comes from the dialogue in which that we had last week with um, Brother Walter Williams, Professor Walter Williams. And so we wanted to explain um, some things and break things down into um, the very last compound, as we would say. Um, is my co-host on, Brother Mike? Yo. All right, all right, Yo. all right. Can you all right, hear me? You start it. Um, you got Correct. any um, thing you want to say um, based on that subject, philosophy versus metaphysics? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay, so I don't know, you know, KRS-One was one of, now this is this is hip-hop, but KRS-One was the first one to put out that joint called My Philosophy, you know, way back in the day, if you heard that one. And, you know, you heard in the hook, it was, um, you know, some white guy, some professor, and he goes, I think very deeply, you know. <laughs> right. So, that is what right. philosophy is um it's all about is those deep thinking questions and really you don't necessarily have the answers. I never had the answers just like if I just said I if you know what existentialism is, you know what that is, right? Yes. Mhm. So basically there's a lot of people out there just that just wanna uh believe and just say, well, I exist because I exist. Or in the Matrix, basically all their information was best. Uh, a lot of it was based on philosophy. I was just watching it last night. Um, you know, the first Matrix. And it was based on, I think, therefore I am. So Right. Basically, it's know thyself. You yeah, know, exactly. And, um, that's the whole key. Matter of fact, when he came to see the oracle, she specifically asked him, "What, you know, what did it say over top of the door?" You know, it was written in Latin, 
And right, what right, he said right. was to know thyself. And, of course, we know that is the ancient proverb of the Africans, and particularly the Egyptians, in which that um, that proverb is plastered everywhere and all over the temple doors um, throughout um, Egypt. You know, um, ancient Tamaray or Kemet, you know, now called Egypt. And, you know, to know thyself is to know God in the universe. So that is the right. key. That is metaphysics. The supreme axiom is as above, so below, as within, so without. You know, and that's yeah, by examining exactly. nature, you know yourself, because nature itself is the universe in miniature form, and, you know, that you can see, touch, taste, and smell outside of you. But that same correlation has to play a part on your very existence, because nature itself influences you. And that's the reason why um, the word yeah. nature or nature, you know, or nature is, you know, is now the transliteration of the word you know, in English or the translation of the word in English as nature, you know, it's the same word, you know. As um, everything is natural, right. Right, right, it's natural, and it's actually a force of nature, and we ourselves have a force within us of nature or a natural force in which that is prana, or chi, or key energy, in which that has become personified to form our physical body from the universal elements, you know, prana itself is the all-pervading energy of the universe. And that exactly. energy of the universe was concentrated into making us, composing us, designing us, you know, um, fashioning us, shaping us. You know, while we was, you know, in the womb, forming our brain and our hearts and then the spinal columns and the... um you know, the um, bone structure and so forth and so on. You know, these right. are the, you know, the way the elements, earth, air, water, and fire played a part in our transformation, you know, into what we call um, amoeba to a embryo to a fetus. Embryo, right. You know, to become, you know, now, you know, an adult, you know. so. Right. That energy is what personified our very existence. And it's funny that you sent me, um, you know, you said, is this soulful enough for you? And you sent me, uh, you know, <laughs> I, you know, Earth, Wind, Earth and Fire, because fire. it's the serpent. It's the Kundalini energy, that Naga, you know, in which that formed our physical body into existence. And so when you read the story of Adam and Eve, you know, it goes far beyond just a story. It's talking about our very existence and how that energy gave us the power of the knowledge of of um of good and evil. You know, in other words, exactly. the will, will in which that is um demonstrated from the solar plexus, you know, um you know, um area of our body, you know, which is that that is the right. the nexus or uh, the nerve plexus of our sympathetic nervous system, our parasympathetic nervous system and, and that, you know, is you know, how we are able to feel and assimilate information and conduct electromagnetic properties throughout our body, you know, up and down the spinal column and through our various um, chakras or endocrine glands. Right. You know, so, I mean, these are the things in which that when you get into um, the philosophy, like you said, um, Karis One um, had the song um, Philosophy, you know, or, um, you know, you think very deeply. And, and he is one get, of the deep teachers. Mm -hmm. Right, right. When you get into philosophy, we know it's the study, you know, uh, um, basically of the general and fundamental problems. So it don't explain, right. you know, or give a solution, but it definitely gives you the um, problems, and such as those connected with your existence or the knowledge and the value and reason and mind and language. So philosophy is distinguished from other ways of addressing such problems by its critical, you know, um, way in which that it approaches in a rational argument. Or now, you the word could just say, uh, right? The word right. philosophy comes from um, the Greek word literally, which means the love of wisdom. You know, what I'm saying. As a matter of fact, when a person get a PhD, is a P, it, the PhD what people don't know that's that's a philosophy degree or a doctor of philosophy. <laughs> that's what a PhD oh, is. Okay. Is a doctor of philosophy, you know, and so the appellation of, a certain, of doctor of a certain philosophy, right? The, the, you know, the word doctor from Latin, you know, means teacher, 
You know what I'm saying? So actually a person who has a PhD is a teacher of philosophy. You know what I'm saying? Because they indicated that a life dedicated to learning, to knowledge, and to the spreading of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? And, now, and it's interesting with the um, with the degrees because uh, a friend of mine asked that, and they were wondering if just like you get degrees, just like you get degrees in Freemasonry, are they kind of tied like the system? Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, when you put on that square cap, you know, you become an alumni, which means an illuminated one, which means you become part of the Illuminati. <laughs> but so as every time you graduate, you an illuminated one. become an illuminated one. So if you graduated from kindergarten to the first grade, you become an illuminated one. You graduated from the eighth to the ninth grade, from junior high to high school, you become an illuminated one. When you graduated from um, 12 to college, you become an illuminated one. When you graduate a four-year degree from college, possibly going to the master, you become an illuminated one. When you go from master's into a Ph.D. program, you become an illuminated one. So you, you know what I'm saying, have reached the highest profession or degree possible. You know what I'm saying? Which and master. so when you get into metaphysics, it's the study of the most general Features of reality, such as essence, time, the relationship between mind and body, and that's what metaphysics give you, is that it's the relationship between mind and body. You know what I'm saying? Most importantly, and there's other which is a little um, bit. physics, which is cosmology, which deals with astrology or the study of the world. You know what I'm saying? But it really is the study of being. You know what I'm saying? It's the study of right. being. And yeah, mm, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I was doing some study. I, I do a lot of studying at the, um, you know, I go to Barnes & Noble. It's a good place where I can get information. And so a lot of people want to debate. I remember there's this one guy, uh, basically he was, right now he's like a guitar teacher to me. But he debated when I told him one time about chakras, right? He was like, I don't know. I don't know about chakras. I don't know how, how to believe in them. I'm like, well, there's an endocrine gland system, and, it even shows just like, you know, like the earth has its own magnetic field, uh, just like plants and anything that's living has a magnetic field that, or if you want to call them melanin centers or whatever you want to call them, that magnetic field is actually the spinning light that we're talking about for people that want me to get scientific. Exactly. No doubt about it, and that deals with mind and body, objects and the um, own properties of the whole, or either as the part, events, process, or causation. So I mean, that's metaphysics. You know what I'm saying? So whenever you can take what is in nature and apply it to your physical body, that's metaphysics. People think that metaphysics is nothing more than um, dealing with health, or you know, or looking at UFOs <laughs> or ancient aliens. You know, because they've been oh, watching man. so much damn History Channel, you know, and um, A&E. You know, but, um, you know, worrying about ancient aliens and UFOs and not knowing where your liver is in your body or your pancreas or your spleen, you know what I'm saying, but yet talking about chakras and you don't even know where your organs are located at, your endocrine gland system, you know what I'm saying, um, is for night. You know, that's BS, but yet you know about extraterrestrials. Or you know about aliens from from ancient times, you know. You can tell me about Atlantis. You can tell me about Lemuria. But you can't tell me about where your liver is located or where your prostate <laughs> gland is located and what function it, um, is it for. And you don't know how those scriptures in which that you've been reading all this time, whether it's the Bible, the um, Quran, the Bahava Gita, the Hispanishads, the Marhababa, uh, um, Jain, or either in Jainism, those sacred texts, or in the Buddhist, the five books of Buddha Sin, or the um, Advent, um, 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 Vesta, you know, from the Zoroastrian texts, or the Dead Sea Scrolls, or the Book of the Dead, Perhem Heru, um, Sut texts, Pyramid texts, Coffin texts, the 42 books of Tahuti, but yet, can't tell me how these books, these so called inspired books, from around the world, supposedly from holy men, from prophets, you know, 
just getting caught up into the stories and can't tell me what these stories actually mean and how they apply to you in this day and time, once again, is for not. What is the purpose of you reading these particular stories if you can't explain how it relates to you here and Yeah, now, exactly. You know, and so I agree. That's not metaphysics, you know what I'm saying? And that should not be taught. You know, we've been taught that God is outside of us. We have to kneel and pray and look up with our hands together up into the heavens because the man upstairs, you know, God yeah. is up there in the heaven. You know, whenever you break down the word heaven, it comes from the word Uranus or Orion. Orion, which means exactly. Many bodies, constellation, zodiac sign, you know what I'm saying? Um, or star planes, astral, you know, or the seven particular, or the seven particular um, um, atmospheres, you know, such as the ionosphere, you know. So, I mean, when people, you know, really can't comprehend, you know, what metaphysics details, you know, they get lost because they think that you're dealing with spookism. How can you be dealing yeah, with Yeah, well, a right, lot of people... Dealing with when the relationship is specifically between the mind and the body, you know what I'm saying, nature and your physical body, you know, it's the study of being. Exactly. You know. And also a lot of people, like, when it comes to dealing with this, they, they look at it from a logical, rational part of their brain instead of looking at the... Um, I think what you would say is right side of the brain where the right side of the brain is more intuitive and can comprehend the whole picture instead of judging it, you know, forward, just like that. Exactly. And trying to understand. Yeah, exactly. And let's look at the origin of spirit because um, metaphysics was being played out, but yet was but what was being talked about was spirituality. And spirituality, according to Middle, middle English, you know what I'm saying, from the Anglo, French, or Latin, is esprit, or espiritus, within Latin, in which that basically means the breath, or to spire, which means to blow or breathe. So when you talk about the origin of the word spirit or spirituality, it means to breathe. So... When we talk about breathing, the science of breath, that's what helps taps you into the spiritual portion of yourself, your psyche, which is your soul, or your ba, because it deals with the ka and the shu, all right? In ancient Kemet, shu was the personification of air. He symbolized the word made flesh, the breath of life, which later on goes to Yahshua, which is Yes, becomes right. Jesus. You know, so we got to go through these particular religions and see. That's why Ishua Lakeba is known as the Lord of the Crossroads, is because he symbolizes the four points on the cross, which is the same cross in which they claim that Jesus died on, which is nothing more than <laughs> uh, don't, fire. Which don't is even get me than, started on the Lakeba. <laughs> I used to go to that crossroads all the time. Right. You know, trying to learn a, a skill, you know, <laughs> with my guitar, you know. But um, definitely, you know. Exactly. So, I mean, um, you have to be able to read um, what is being said and pick these particular symb symbologies out because that's all allegory is, a symbology. You know, as a matter of fact, um, it tells you that the most profound secrets, you know what I'm saying, um, of Freemasonry are not revealed in the lodge. They belong only to the few. So when you go and study uh, what is called metaphysics, actually what you're studying is the ancient mysteries of Egypt, all right, in which that was originally called Herbach or Herubach, which means the light teachings. And when you're dealing with the light, you're dealing with um, frequencies, in the visible spectrum, the visible spectrum, that means the color red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Those seven colors symbolize the rainbow, which symbolize the seven major endocrine glands or seven chakras within each and every one of us. 
The base chakra or root chakra is red. The sacral or navel chakra is orange. The solar plexus is yellow. The heart thymus gland is green. The throat chakra is sky blue. The third eye region, in between the eyebrows, all the way up to the hairline, which are seven of those, called the seven eyes of Allah, the seven eyes of God, or the seven um, symbolic to that, um, or um, basically what is known as um, the color indigo. All right? And then you have at the crown the color violet. All right? Um, so, which is symbolic. Yeah, reading, uh, reading rainbow. Right. The pain gland that. and the pituitary gland. Um, um, you know, those particular colors. So that's what those endocrine glands and those colors symbolizes, frequencies. And so when the guy is trying to teach you about frequencies or guitar playing, and he's a musician and he doesn't understand the correlation between sound and his physical body, then you really can't teach me. Yeah, exactly. And I asked him a question. I was, I was like, okay, well, so you don't believe in chakras, but you believe in love. I'm like, that doesn't, that just doesn't ring, you know. You, if you have emotions, then point blank, I mean, you have chakras. Because each each emotion, I mean, when you go for, say, either worry or, you know, um, to be grounded, you know, you start with the root. And um, to be lustful, you go uh, to the sacral. And then to be confident, will-powered, you know, the solar plexus, and on to the heart and, and so forth. So that just doesn't ring true. And a lot of these people believe in emotions, but they label themselves either a nihilist or, a, you know what that is, right? Yeah. Or beta. So these people that even believe in emotions, but they believe there's no purpose, in life or existence, it just doesn't make sense, yo. Right. So really, they're just messed up. But then I got to the, I got to the source of the answer that I was looking for, and he said, "Well, because we were in this kind of like debate, because I was telling him basically about the 528 frequency, and if you turn tune your guitar to a 528 frequency, supposedly." it radiates this, you know, certain power, you know, coming from the guitar or, you know, a piano or tuning forks, you know, whatever you want to call it. I was telling him about that. And he looked at me like, you know, you're just some teenager trying to show trying to show me, you know, teach me. And I've been playing guitar for 30 years, and I never heard anything about a 528 frequency. I'm like, yo, this is just going to make your music sound better. You know what I'm saying? and um, That's the frequency of love. And, you know, yeah. of course it would make it sound better because you're dealing now with the love vibration, which is chi or prana or key energy, you know. And whenever you're dealing with those type of, you know, um, exercises such as qigong or tai chi or I'm um, dealing with the healing properties of reiki or pranic healing or et cetera, dealing with the light. And you can see those qigong moves actually being done on the walls of, um, of um, ancient Kemet. Um, with Akhenaten and his wife Nefertiti and their children, when they have their hands up in a um, particular posture um, or position up towards the sun, and the sun rays are coming down um, in a form of hands, um, symbolizes that the sun is touching them and transforming them and bestowing a gift upon them. And this is why um, they have gifts um, in their hands or vessels, because it's a cups in which that symbolizes filling up my cup, you know, my cup run of over, in which that is the same thing within, um, you know, the 23rd Psalm, where it says my cup run of over. You know, people don't understand these um, sciences, you know. Um, when your chakras are activated, you can begin to store energy or bring energy into your hand chakras, your feet chakras, absorb prana from the earth through your feet chakras, you know. Which, Bubbling springs, right. Right, the bubbling spring which sits right behind um, the balls of the feet, you know, um, going towards the middle portion, which symbolizes the heart uh, when um, in reflexology and acupressure. Um, or um, with your um, palm of your hand, the center of the palm of your hand can absorb air prana, you know, um, in order to transmit. And then you can store these energies in what is called um, the three treasures, or what is known as the three Dantians, the lower Dantian, the middle Dantian, and the upper Dantian, 
which basically is um, the science of um, uh, of a battery, is, is the same. So a person who depletes their energy on a daily basis based on what they look at or what they smell or taste or touch, you know, or hear, you know, every time you do these particular things, you're losing energy. Well, you have to learn how to recharge your battery at the same time on a daily basis. So by storing energy into your lower dantian, you can create what is known as longevity, uh, rejuvenation, re- um, revitalization, regeneration. You know, um, all these things take place. It can actually lead to eventually immortality, you know, by the amount of energy in which that you can store into these three particular um, areas, in particular within um, your dantian, lower dantian. So when we are talking about this, you know, we have to really understand, you know, what's going on. You know, like we have said, spirit means breath. So when you learn how to breathe, because we know that the average person breathes shadowly. They do not breathe deeply. They do not get down into the five right lobes and the four left lobes or the nine lobes um, of their lungs. Yeah. You know, I see that not, going on way too much. Right, they do not. Way um, too much, man. Because everybody is hyperventilating because we're always in a stressful manner, you know, and um, especially people of color, you know, as we would say, are more because that's, I mean, that's why no, one of the number one diseases is high blood pressure, you know what I'm saying, and that comes from stress. And so... When we under high, so when people have high blood pressure, we know that there's a correlation between um, not breathing deep enough and being relaxed, and that's why breathing and water is one of the two factors in which that actually lowers your blood pressure. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is what is actually going on. You know, what you got to say about that? I mean, really. I mean, it's it's all truth. All the truth is there. I think we're looking too hard, and we think it's it has to be something complex. And the, it, it's really simple. I mean, as as in um, just an application. I mean, it's all there. Especially, especially now. I mean, I've never been to one of the temples, but in the nation of gods and earths, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's all. All of that is there and I mean if you just take one step at a time and not think of it as so complicated I mean yo it'll really change your life man yeah well when we go back to the science of breath also because even in the nation of gods and earths you know um, the lessons are actually broken down like for example a brother called me just yesterday he asked me about the um, uh, 1 through 14 the justice lesson which is the um, you know Ten, in which that dealt with why was Muhammad or any Muslim murder the devil? What is the duty of each Muslim in regard to the four devils? And it breaks down to the four lower chakras being the four devils, you know, and that um, by mastering oneself you receive um, travel, free passage to see Prophet Muhammad or Brother Muhammad. You know, what I'm saying now, how can you see Brother Muhammad if Brother Muhammad supposedly lived fourteen hundred years ago, or you know? Um, right. You know, so what are they talking about? You know, what is this holy city of Mecca? You know, uh, well, when you go to the 101s, it speaks about the holy city of Mecca also. You know, it also speaks about the fact that when you go to the Holy Quran Circle 7, it tells the adepts, you know, or the Egyptian adepts, that they must teach the revealers of light, that they must teach the Moors, you know, um, the principle of the science of breath, which is the holy breath, that we must teach the whole science of the holy breath, you know. So yeah. when are we talking about the chakras and the breath, all that is correlated to the activation of the endocrine glands. And you can actually bypass it by practicing what is called the cobra breath technique in which that um, Master Sanyata... Um, and I have yet to get that and learn that. <laughs> Right, right. That's something in which that normally comes through the initiation by him, you know. Um, but um, it came from Bobby G, you know. Um, and when you go and do your research about the cosmic cobra breath technique, you will find that it actually can bypass the whole chakra system by bringing energy straight up the spine 
um, to the um, brain area and illuminating the mind in order to expand beyond just the 10% capability of the normal or average person into the 90%. You know, so um, that gives you more access to universal consciousness. So taking you outside of this matrix or what we've been limited to, which is just in regard to the 10%, hence the reason why we've been dumbed down is because they don't want you to think outside of the 10% usage of the brain. And many of us have been so dumbed down, they barely use 2% of their brain. So, I mean, when we look, you know, and so um, I know in your song, Limitless, which you're going to get ready to play here real soon, I know that um, in the clip um, from Limitless which that you took, it was saying that some of us use 20% of the brain, but I doubt that very seriously, you know. Right. Um, I think that was just talking about a person who took that pill. <laughs> they were able to go 20%. Uh, yeah, yeah, and people are actually looking for that pill. That's the funny thing. Right, right. They're looking for that pill. And, I mean, you know, that will be fine, but that would only work so long compared to doing it naturally. Right. And so when we talk about the chakra system, we're just talking about it in the visible spectrum. But remember we spoke about before that melanin has a energy gap in it in the visible spectrum realm. You know what I'm saying? And you have to go to ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light fills up the melanin gap of energy. So when we start absorbing more ultraviolet light, you know, and um, we are able to use more of our melanin because guess what? Melanin is only 10% active in us also. Our DNA is only 10% active in us. The, the, the scientists say that we only see 10% of the visible um, universe, which is the other 90% is called dark matter. So it taps us. Whenever we can go outside of the 10% of anything, we can go into the dark matter reality or realm or density level. And by going into that, we can actually go back just like the light came forth from the darkness, you know what I'm saying, but the darkness comprehended it not. is because um, the light came from the darkness. The darkness didn't have to yeah, comprehend exactly. You know what I'm saying? The light itself, because it came from it. You know what I'm saying? The, dar uh, dark the darkness is the, is. the light, like they always right. say, yeah. You know, so um, that's what all of this science taps you into. So whenever you are able to use more than just 10% of your brain, 10% of your um, chakra system, which is your kundalini, raising up through your spinal column, use more than just 10% of it, because 10% is what actually keep us alive, you know, um, walking, talking, sleeping, shitting, fucking going to work. That's what the ten percent does for us. You know what I'm saying? The other ninety percent we rarely tap into and which that give us um the extra sensory perceptions or the ESP or higher sensory perception or what has been defined in some ways as spookism and it's not. It's is basically the gifts of the Holy Spirit in which that we are actually being able to tap into, the Holy Spirit being the Kundalini itself. And which that give us access to more than just um, the random average usage, you know what I'm saying, of ourselves, you know, and of this yeah. body, you know what I'm saying, as well as of its components, you know. So, you know, when we get into um, these, these real deeper sciences, this is what we come up with, you know, like, for example, according to um, Gerald Massey, who basically was the foremost Egyptologist in his book, The Gerald Massey Lectures, he states that the name... Um, you know what I'm saying? Freemason is derived from the ancient Metuneter Freemason, which means the child of the light. You know, so when we get into the Herbach teachings, which means the light teachings, and then you being a child of the light, it was specifically teaching you how to utilize the light to tap you back into the darkness. And the darkness symbolizes, um, consciousness symbolizes the light. Beyond the consciousness, you have the subconscious. You have the super conscious, you have the magnetic conscious and the infinite consciousness. In other words, that becomes the 90% in which that it taps you back into. Which is very much like a light bulb. You know, right. uh, I mean, so, you know, you're talking about somebody with super high consciousness is just uh, a big-ass light bulb, you know, with a bunch of light. Because, I mean, the, the whole light or, you know, I mean, just, you know, they compare, you know, light to knowledge. You know, first there was uh, darkness, and then there was a light, just like the sun, and, and the light bulb plays the same, pretty much, same part of the sun, so, I mean, you really just lighten up, you know? <laughs> exactly. Or become enlightened. Exactly. And that's Buddha. You know, Buddha means to awaken or to open, 
you know, or to become enlightened. And Buddha, we know the religion of Buddha itself is taken from Pata, you know, or Puta, you know, according to Gerald Massey. Um, that was the ancient deity or the netter of the netter rules. He was the god of the gods. And they took that concept because they understood that it was something internal that you awaken or open up to. What is it that you awaken and open up to? It's to all universal possibilities. Your mind no longer becomes limited. It's no longer confined. You no longer put God in a box. You understand that um, your body is the temple of God and that um, you can utilize this temple and you can go outside this temple at any time that you choose to and travel into the astral planes or the soul plane. You know what I'm and saying? Of course, something must exist on the astral because before it becomes tangible or in the physical. Exactly. So, you know, it starts off as an idea and, you know, the more that you give power to that idea, it grows and grows and then, you know, Sooner or later, you see it in front of you. Exactly. And that's based on the power of will. The more willpower you can use, which is your intent, um, the more frequency you can bring into yourself, the more that it will manifest. So you need intent, which is your purpose, which is your will, and you need frequency, which is dealing with energy. And when once you put these two together, you know what I'm saying, intent plus frequency it equals manifestation. Exactly. That's the formula. You know, so um, this is this is what, but, but see, the thing is, how do you get enough energy? And this is what we was talking about. When, when, when one studies Qigong and Tai Chi or Reiki or Pranic Healing or any of the healing arts or sciences, you learn that you can actually absorb more energy, one, through your melanin, two, through your hair follicles, Three, um, into your um, batteries, which is your dantians, which is the upper one is your third eye. The mid one is your heart chakra, in particular the back of the heart. And the third and the lowest one um, is um, right below the navel um, chakra area, the navel, and right below it to about two inches right below. And you can store energy into these three areas. If you want to extend your life, then you will absorb energy into your lower dantian. If you want um, more love, more compassion, then you will absorb energy at the back of the heart, into your heart to make it expand and open and activate. If you want more intelligence, then you will absorb more energy into your third eye, third eye region. And this is where you will store this energy at. If you want a higher IQ, this is what you would do. So... Um, if you want to tap into your past lives, then you will open up the mouth of God, which is at the back of the um, mandula amagata, which is at the back of the head, which is called the skull, or what is also called gulp within Hebrew, all right, or cup, you know. And um, it also symbolizes a monkey, and that monkey symbolizes tahuti, because tahuti symbol is a monkey or a baboon, in which that tahuti symbolizes wisdom. Exactly. All right? So... And that and that's interesting because um, you know just like the uh, reading I had with uh, Sister Panina, uh, she did a reading and she said basically that I was uh, a teacher or you know much of this wisdom, I mean of course from studying, but it is in the back of the head where it's stored where you know we have past lives and we gained all this knowledge. So we're not just some little kid that was or I or I mean adult that was. This is our first time here. Exactly. That we don't know anything. Right, right. Well, and and it's funny because at the back of the head, the Medulla Magada, that is the place of your past lives. That is also the place of, if you can actually scar that location, which um, in Qigong, what you would do is tap on that area three times a day, 25 times a day to activate it, just like you do on your thymus gland and just like you do on your testicles. You activate those right. particular glands or areas, all right? And yeah. when you do yeah. that at the back yeah. of the head, um, you scar that area, and you can actually produce photographic memory, all right? So now there's a question that's in the um, in the chat room that say, um, why hasn't Egyptology helped the Egyptian nation to advance more? They're still very intelligent and still treat women as second-class citizens. The reason why is because they can't decode symbolism. It's ignorance, yeah. Right, they can't I mean, decode a symbolism because they're not the original people of that land. 
the original people of that land, they have moved out, and they was called the Kushites, which they have moved down, and which that is known as the um, Nubians. They was the original people of that land. These are Arabs, or the amalgamated um, um, children of theirs, of the, of the Nubians, who have come in, and they have, um, and they did not go through the um, 40 years of the rites of passage in which that was under the initiation process. If you get the book Stolen Legacy, you had to go to school or through the um, ancient mysteries, as they was called, the Herbach teachings, for 40 years. 40 years. All right? And the Nubians are um, now known as the Sudanese or the um, or the or the um, Somalians or the Ethi- or the Ethiopians. They're the um, darker skinned people of those of that particular area, but they was moved out and pushed down into the area once um, the Arabs um, began to dominate that particular region. All right, and being that they did not go through the mystery school. Um, because they are the byproducts of the Phoenicians, Greeks, and the Nubians who is there, and that's how the, um, you know, the so-called Arabs was produced. They was produced through the Greeks, you know, which are the Persians, um, specifically through Alexander the so-called Great, his brothers Ptolemy, um, Ptolemy Soto, Ptolemy um, Lago, and their descendants known as the Ptolemies, and uh, Cleopatra and all of them, as they mixed in with the Nubians or the um, original people of their area to produce um, the amalgamated or the mixed um, Arabs as we now know them as. But the original Arabs, according to Sex and Race by J.E. Rogers, were blacks, you know, um, you know, or Africans, as we would say, you know, uh, for, you know, different, term, you know, for terminology reasons. I'm trying to explain it in that way. You know, so... Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, which is interesting because I have uh, some of my very close friends. They're um, they're Vietnamese. They got here, you know, say ten about ten years, maybe more than that. Twelve, probably twelve years ago, they got here, and I thought it was funny because we were just you know in a store, you know, Hobby Lobby, and you know I went to pick up this pyramid because I thought it was cool. It had Horus and. Um, you know, ISIS and all that on them, and mm-hmm. I I showed them one of these uh one of these like little statues of King Tut, and he kept looking at it, and it, it was so funny because he just I could see the connection was there. His knowledge he doesn't have knowledge of Egyptology, or uh you know he doesn't probably even know you know who the hell Tahuti or or any of the Egyptian gods were, but um. Just his connection, you could tell, you know, like, I go back there. You see what I'm saying? Right. And Uh, see, also, if you get a book called What They Never Told You in History Class by Indo Kush, he breaks down that the original Egyptians were Nubians or blacks or Africans. Understand what I'm saying, that it was darker-skinned people, all right? These are the people who built the pyramids. How we know is because... Um, most of the structures and temples actually, um, like for example, the pyramid of um, of Khufu, which is Cheops, um, um, uh, uh, the other pyramids. Um, when you go to the opening, to the and you go down into the shafts, these shafts are, you know, four feet high or smaller. Now, the Twa people who was there, who was known as the Pygmies, who were once again African people, they was there in Egypt, and they helped build these pyramids, and they was there over 8,000 years ago. 6,000 B.C. was when they left, all right? Um, also, um, that was along with the Dogons, the Dogons of Mali. If you get the book called Serious Mysteries by Robert Temple, he specifically states that um, the Dogon were also there in Egypt, and they were the astrologers or the priests of the astrologers or cosmology during that time period. And they left because of invasions in which that took place 6,000 years ago, um, you know, 6,000 B.C. or 8,000 years ago also. So you had all these pyramid structures in which that was built already during that time period by the Dogons, by the Twa people, um, and others. So, yes, when we're talking about different um, people, but we still talk about African people. Okay, how many um, different groups was there? You know, but we still talk about African people, regardless. You know, whether it's the 
Dogons, whether it's the Twa people who was known as the Pygmies, or whether it's the Nubians, you know what I'm saying, who now becomes the Sudanese or the Ethiopians and the Somalians or whatever the case is. Um, this is who we're talking about. You and know, I believe they um, showed and a lot that of the tribes the movie, that was Mom. in East Africa at that time, according to um, Dr. Binyakinen and John Henry Clark, moved towards the West. You can get this in Ivan von Sonoma books also. Um, he speaks about it. And how now, like, um, you go to Niger or Nigeria, um, the, um, in particular, um, the Ibu and the Yoruba also um, have traits of that same lineage of the ancient Egyptians because the word Niger and Nigeria actually are the ancient words for the uh, pharaohs and the pharisees. You know what I'm saying? The word Naga, you know what I'm saying, or Nagu, you know what I'm saying, was the name for um, the pharaoh. And the um, Naga, you know what I'm saying, was the name of the pharisees. You know what I'm saying? So um, this this is what is actually um, going on here. So you have to um, read this and understand this. You know, um, this this is what is really going on. And that's why I give out the books so that you can go and do your own research. Don't believe nothing that I'm saying or um, a brother um, Michael is saying. You know, go and do your research. Go and study. You know, this is what this is all about. You know. Well, I mean, I mean, they they came here for a purpose to listen. So, I I mean, question. I would say question. Right, right. Well, let, let me <laughs> let me say this right. before we move on because we talk about symbolism and we talk about um, how all this is based on symbolism. The ancient Egyptians didn't leave all that writing or metunetur or metunetur on the walls if they did not want you to decode it, if there was not a way to decode it, if it was not within your ancestral data bank, which is known as your DNA or your genes, all right? And knowing that your DNA and your genes, which are your ancestral voices, which is your intellect, intellect, or intelligence, you know what I'm saying? In other words, um, um, the voices from within your genes that tells you what is going on if you were not able to actually decode these mysteries. You know what I'm saying? If you go to Galatians, the fourth chapter, as I was talking about last week, um, the 24 verses says, which things are an allegory. So it's talking about the Bible itself being an allegory, and it's talking about Abraham um, and his two sons and his um, bondmaid and free um, woman being an allegory. Now, Abraham is the father of the monotheistic father of, of um, all three so-called monotheist belief system, whether it's Christianity, Islam, or Judaism. It came from him, supposedly. You know what I'm saying? But it says here that it's an allegory. So what does this allegory mean? You know what I'm saying? And why was three religions, you know, in which they had to fight each other constantly, evolved from an allegory, still being used? This is the point at which that Professor Walter Williams was talking about, actually. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's being used because they can't decode the symbolism. Which they don't know is how interpretation. To the physical body. You know what I'm saying? They don't know um, what all of this means. You know, so we go to the Quran. Same thing as in the Quran. It tells you the same thing there in um, Surah 3, um, al um, Igram, the family of Igram. You know what I'm saying? It says right here in the seventh um, verse, it says, It is he who has sent down to thee the book. And it are verses, basics, and fundamental of established meaning. And they are the foundations of the book. Others are allegorical. But those in whose heart is perversity follows the part thereof that is allegorical, seeking discord and searching for its hidden meanings. But no one knows its hidden meanings except for Allah and those who are firmly grounded in knowledge. So, the reason why for, Christian, for Christians, Muslims, and Jews... Constantly fighting each other because in their hearts there's perversity. They follow the parts that is allegorical, seeking discord, seeking war because they can make money because it's a political strategy to make money off of it. But yet at the same time they're searching for the philosopher's stone. They're searching for the hidden mysteries or the hidden meanings. You know what I'm saying? But no one knows its hidden meanings except for Allah and those who are firmly grounded in knowledge. This is why I have dedicated 25 years of my life to research and study. You know what I'm saying? It's because I wanted to be firmly grounded in knowledge. 
And so this is what it says. It says we believe in the book. The whole of it is from our Lord, and none will grasp the message except men of understanding. So he gives you, even in the Quran, it tells you the difference between um, um, ones firmly grounded in knowledge or men of understanding. They were only ones who would get it because they're the only ones in which that would have that connection with Allah. In other words, they're the ones who reach their higher selves, while others are playing with perversity in their heart, and they're tapping to their lower selves, and this is causing a discord between the various religions of the world in which that is now about to um, possibly get us into World War Three. You know what I'm saying? So this is the um, idiotic, you know, um, nonsense in which that is taking place right now on planet Earth. Exactly. And and, and that's why um, we shouldn't be, I mean, you can look at it as so many points, but we should really look at it as, you know, as a as a human point more than a fact of, you know, this is my story, this is their story, and all these beliefs are you know, going against each other, but this has been going on since the beginning of time. And, it, you know, and it's, it's supposedly even though we were more advanced back then, as at least, you know, spiritually, it's just like this whole type of thing, religions fighting each other, this has been going on since the beginning of time. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's the reason why, because you have those who have perversity within their heart. You know what I'm saying? You know, they don't have a pure heart. They don't have a pure heart, therefore they don't have a pure mind. So how can you understand anything of purity? And, I mean, even Jesus said, um, he who has ears, let him listen. No doubt, let him hear. They're, so they're when listening. we get into the definition of allegory, um, even according to um, my, um, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, it defines... Allegory as an expressive style that uses fictional fictional characters and events to describe some subject by suggestive resemblance and extension or extended metaphor. So these are fictional characters and events in which that is attempting to convey a message. Right, a just like the matrix. Right, a spiritual underlying meaning. Matter of fact, um, there's another definition. It says symbolic work, a work in which that the characters and events are to be understood and represented other things and symbolically expressing a deeper, often spiritual, moral, or political meaning. So when we look at these stories in the Bible, there's a spiritual, moral, and a political meaning to these stories. You know what I'm saying? When you look at the um, science of law and redemption, then that deals with the political meaning of the scriptures, and you can use it in that regard. Dealing with common law or dealing with constitutional law. You know what I'm saying? When you're looking at the morality of it, then you know that that's dealing with um, what each individual perceives as good and bad, right and wrong, agreeable, disagreeable. When you're dealing with it from a spiritual aspect, then you're dealing with it from decoding um, the symbolism and the mysteries. For example, when you go to um, Genesis, the 32nd chapter, and it speaks about Jacob was wrestling with the angel. And the angel, which is actually Uriel, according to Jewish folklore, hit him within his private area or his thigh and made him a sin to God. In other words, hit him into his private parts, his um, root or base chakra, and made the Kutalini energy have to raise up so he can ascend into the heavens. And hence, his name before became from Jacob to Israel, which means to ascend to God. This is all symbolic, you know, meaning, because Uriel actually is the Kutalini. Right. In which that, as it ascends, it becomes Israel, which means to ascend to God. So he transformed from Uriel, which is a Kutalini, which now the Kutalini ascends to become Israel, to eventually to sit at the crown seat to become Mikael or Michael. Right, exactly. And so hence now... Um, Israel was able now to see God face to face and he named the land Penal Land or Pineal Land. Now, the word Pineal Land is the same as Pineal Land. Pineal Gland, Pineal or Pineal Land. They was giving you the symbolism. You got to understand is that um, they already knew about the science of the brain and the workings of the anatomy of the body. The ancient Egyptians, according to um, the story of Imhotep from the um, emperor 
uh, um, epi, um, papyrus, um, the Epic Papyrus, um, which was actually the written testimonies and documents from Imhotep and other um, doctors from the Third Dynasty, when Imhotep was um, the father of medicine. He's the father of medicine, in which that he was under Zozer as the prime minister or prime visor. And that information was put together, you know what I'm saying, uh, which became known as the Eber um, Papyrus Text. And it states in there, you know what I'm saying, over um, 200 um, various cures for um, ailments and diseases, if not more. So we got to understand, you know what I'm saying, they already knew about the human anatomy. So when they took these stories, they was putting it into um, allegorical um, plays, so that you can tell it to your children, but as they grow, you can begin to decode these stories for them so they will not be stuck in kindergarten. Many of our people who go to Christian churches are still, or Islam, or um, to the mosque, or the um, or mosques, are still stuck in allegories. Or the Jews who go to, or Hebrews who go to the synagogue, they're still stuck in allegories. I mean, stuck in, um, 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 in that, um, and it's just saying literal. Instead of not um, instead of not understanding the allegories, they think everything is, is historically literal. Jesus um, and um, 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 Moses split the Red Sea, or Abraham um, was about to sacrifice his um, his son Isaac, you know, or you know, um, all of these things. They're still stuck in just the story and can't can't define what the story actually is trying to convey to them especially when it comes to the human body. Yep. I mean, that's definitely that's definitely one of the problems. I know I've been uh, trying for a long time because I was brought up into Christianity like many of our people. Um, and, yo, man, I mean, the only one that, that made the first attempt, the only one that first made the first attempt was my, uh, my grandmother, right? Because... My grandpa, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, my grandpa, he was uh, he was a Mason. Uh, I believe either the Scottish Rite or, or the York Rite. Um, and basically, you know, there was a lot of Masonry that was in my family. But, right. you see, my grandpa, uh, my grandpa and my grandma, she was the first person that said, well, what if God could be the son? I mean, it's the light of the world, and it's the bringer of life on the planet that allows, you know, life to exist besides the mind, which is, you know, like we said, or like you said, the um, microcosm of the universe. So why this is all, why not look at God as being the sun? And she said that, and, you know, I mean, people argue with her, but it's been a, it's been a long time trying to just slowly plant this seed of, yo, because I, per- I was the only person. Nobody around here, not too many people in here go in the search of, like, the occult to find things or what they mean. Everybody was afraid of Masons, thought they were all devil worshipers. Nobody did the research. So it was up to me, you know what I'm saying, to try and help uh my parents now, I mean, my mother, you know, I mean, she's open-minded, and she's from Venezuela, so, um, I mean, if you if you just look at my, uh, uh, on my mother's side, uh, my grandmother, you can tell, like, she has, she has that more in her, and, and just, you know, they go to Spain as well, you know what I'm saying, I think they started out in Spain, right? Right. So, anyways, I mean, it's just this whole thing of trying to get our people, and there's so many people, you know, you have the Jehovah Witnesses, you know what I'm saying, knocking at the door, and you have uh, Joe Osteen, you have all these preachers preaching this message so they can keep their money at the same time, make people feel good, but they're not enlightening anybody. Uh, they're taking the energy and using it for themselves. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Well, we, we, we got something for them, you know. We got something for them. Matter of fact, what we got for them is your joint in which that is called Limitless. 
Let and, me um, let. You want to break down the science behind it right quick before we um, get to it? No doubt. I can definitely do that. Okay, so, um, you know, when I, when I was younger, a lot of people thought that I was kind of, I don't know, I basically you have your different kind of people in school. You know, you have your cliques, like you have the jocks, and you have, you know what I'm saying, the cheerleaders, um, you know, your, your general cliques. But I was always put in maybe more like this kind of dumb dumbed down category or something, you know, but really I just had to hide my intelligence because if I showed them, first of all, a lot of them couldn't understand, and for some reason it just wasn't a cool, you know, thing to be intelligent or whatever, but as I learned and as I grew and just, like, taking so much criticism for, like, when I first started and you... Um, in hip hop, you know, I mean, this dude would beat me in a freestyle talking about I saw your mom up on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but really, bringing this forth is just something that I thought I'd do for uh, just the conscious family. Of course, uh, you know, for you, Panic, uh, just the whole conscious community of people that are, you know, directed into a higher consciousness. I made this so because hip-hop has always been aspirational and something about getting you through things and awakening you. So this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to make this kind of joint uh, for those people and just show you that, yo, we, we're not dumbed down people and we definitely do understand and we have a lot to give to the world, you know. No doubt about it. I see everybody in the chat room talking about demons, so let's explain that. The biggest demon that I'm afraid of, the one that dwells within each and every one of us, and that's your lower self. So all this demon outside of you, if you correct the demon within you, then you enjoy and attract the demons outside of you because they won't be able to see your frequency. That's the key. So um, move towards um, um, love. You know what I'm saying? Now, also, when you talk about demons... You're talking about nothing more than the setting sun, all right? Um, the word, um, you have three deities or three positions of the sun in ancient times. When it comes up over the horizon, you have your rule. When it reaches peak, you have Atan, all right? Then as it sets, you have Set or Atum, all right? Atum, A-T-U-M. Atum, another name is Atim, A-T-E-M. All right? Team also was the name T-E-M. Team became D-E-M. And On was another name for Sun, such as Ra. All right? If you go to Heliopolis, you know what I'm saying, um, um, study the information from Heliopolis, which was a city in Egypt, or ancient um, Kemet or Tamaria, you will find that in Heliopolis, actually the original name for Heliopolis was called On, O-N, which is another name for Ra. All right, An also became known as Anu, A-N-U. So in the Sumerian times, the head deity was Anu, which is nothing more than another form of Ra. All right, so when Ra sets, because Ra symbolizes all three positions of the sun, when Ra sets, it becomes Team On. Team On becomes the word Demon. So whenever you're looking at these things, please stop with the spookism. The spookism is not what we're going for tonight. We ain't playing that shit, all right? Understand the science of etymology, linguistics, and the science of how this is within each and every one of us and how to get above your lower nature, your lower mind, your lower self. Because that's what yeah, you remember I mean. when you talk about the demons. When the sun set, when the Kundalini energy is confined to the lower chakras, in particular the first two chakras, in which that deals with lust and greed, then you become the exhibit of those particular traits and everything which that you think is based on fear. Fear is established um, or projected from the lower portion of the brain, which is called the reptilian portion of the brain, also referred to as um, um, the brain stem. And fear, because when you're dealing with the 
reptilian person in the brain, you're dealing with fight or flight, survival. Right, exactly. Um, the, I, I believe it's called cortisol that's produced. Right, right. So that 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 is what that that is what you're talking about. Yeah, spookism is anything that you can't explain. And if you can't explain it, then that's spookism. If you can't explain it, then that's not spookism. That becomes a fact, factology. And that's what we're dealing with is factology. We deal with facts. If you're dealing with anything in which that you can't explain, that is spookism. Because now you're dealing with a belief. You believe that it is so. But you do not know if it's so. And understand, belief, faith, and knowing. Three different things. And knowing is when you know. I mean, there's no higher, really, than knowing than the wisdom, you know? Right. Exactly. So, But they want to they wanna get into demons. Are they looking at it in the fact to contact demons or get above demons? Because we're trying to get... <laughs> I, at least for for me, you know, uh, right. you want to be dealing with the higher self. Right. Well, the, the word demon, let, let, let's go back to it again. All right. When you talk about Adam, because remember, we said Atum is team. Well, the DT within your Bible is called Adam, A-D-A-M, or Dam, D-A-M, in which that symbolizes the blood. Or within the Quran, it states that he was made from black mud, which symbolizes melanin. Or the carbon right. element on the periodical chart, which is the sixth element. And it has six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Hence, the number of the beasts mentioned within your book of Revelation, 666. Once again, if you can't explain this, then you're dealing in spookism. We're not going into spookism. What we do here every week is explain spookism and explain where all the origin of these things come from, what books to go and research from, where to do the knowledge, where you can get the understanding, and gain your wisdom. This is what we do. So you look on the periodical chart, carbon is the sixth element. Look, I mean, it's a fact that supposedly according to Islam and Christianity and Judaism, that Adam was made on the sixth day. So yeah, yeah. day symbolizes the sixth element on the periodical chart. It was an element, not a man, because the elements is what makes up the human body. Man himself, one man, is carbon. The primary element of your human body is carbon. Hence, atoms, the carbon atom in particular. This is the science. This is the science. All right, this is the sign. Right. Exactly. Well, a lot of times I think, well, I know what you're talking about is in the sense of um, demons as in as in that sense. But I was saying, like, as in we don't want to draw, you know what I'm saying, lower entities from the fourth dimension is what I'm saying. Right. Well, when we talk about the first and second overtone of the fourth dimension, if we talk about demons, we talk about fears in which that you have established within your subconscious. And these fears is what you have projected outward of yourself from your own mind and what that you're afraid of based on the um based on the programming of your existence here in this apparent reality. All right, they showed you ghosts when you was a child, they showed you fairies, they showed you leprechauns, they showed you the boogeyman, they showed you Jason, they showed you right. and all of these things and so now you're scared as hell. And so now anything in which that you See, faintly similar to anything in which that you've been taught as a child scares the hell out of you. So it's projected fear in which that you have formed on the first and second overtone of the astral plane of the first, you know, of that of that lower dimension. And that's what you bring into existence. You know what I'm saying? That's what you project here. You know what I'm saying? If you're dealing with those projections. And so when you invoke or evoke these particular beings, if you have any um, um, fear, then that's what you're going to manifest because that's what you're drawing and attracting to yourself. So, yes, these things exist because these are thought forms that you projected outward of yourself in which that now exists and has now become activated off of your fears. Go back and watch the, move, um, the movie um, Monster, Inc., and you will see that the monsters um, took the um, fears of the screams and the fright of the children 
in order back to um, Monsteropolis in order to run this city. The generator that that they used was the fears of the humans in the next dimension, in the next realm. This is what is going on. Now, it's funny that you say that because there were these... um uh, basically, basically, I don't know what you you would call them. I'm, they either part of my subconscious, or you know, they exist somewhere in the the astral realm. Uh, basically, they look like uh, these these dark things. When I say dark, I'm I'm talking about shadow. Right, these are shadow uh, beings. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And when when they touched me, like my ass, like just froze, you know. And uh, but I I was still I was still just a in a state of being awake and asleep at the same time. But when they touched me, you know, like I just, you know, froze completely. I don't know if they were uh, feeding off the, uh, I don't know, my energy or um, I don't know necessarily if they were part of my subconscious, but I know I have that experience. Right. I've seen I've seen these same shadow beings that you're referring to. These are... Um um, lower entities or ghosts, as we would say, in which that um, have become earthbound, and yes, they sometimes feed off the energy of um, of who they can see, which is the light, which is hence your auric field. When you break down the word aura, which is a Latin word, it also means to breathe. So everything in which that you're doing and deal with, your very existence deals with the breath. So let's let's see for example. All right, you can go without eating for 30 days or so. You can go without water for about two weeks, but you can only go without the breath for about three minutes. So the most vital thing in which that you need is breath, and it's the breath in which that keeps your spirit, your mind, and your soul in tune with your physical body. Otherwise, yeah. separate. All right? Yeah. And it would be like a, it's like an egg. All right? Your physical body symbolizes a shell, and then you have the whitish part, which symbolizes the spirit. Then you have the yoke, in which that symbolizes the soul. All right? When the physical body or the shell cracks or dies, then it releases um, the white um, substance, you know what I'm saying, or the white part of the egg and the yoke. Hence, the ka and the ba, in which that was formed on Kanum's potter's wheel, if you go back to the ancient Egyptian mythology. All right? And all of this is talking about the same thing. You Would know? you say that's a, that they're coming from the subconscious, or are they just lower entities in the fourth dimension? It's the, sub, the subconscious and the lower entities in the fourth dimension is, is the same world. Oh, the bridge okay. between this conscious plane and going into the subconscious plane is where the astral plane is located at on the lower astral plane of the first and second overtone. The astral plane is the subconscious. Which is the okay, emotional plane, the, which is also part of the desire body, and that's where you and, and that's where the subconscious comes in play into making things manifest. Now, I wanted to go into, um, or were you continuing on that topic, or uh, well, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay, I wanted to go into the philosophy of magic, basically, because I think a lot of people get it twisted, as in the sense of just going outside and looking at the moon and asking the sky, you know what I'm saying, of a wish or a particular um, information, basically, you know what I'm saying, or, you know, you have a, I mean, you can, you know, charge working with the moon cycles or whatever, you know, you're going off the law of karma, but I wanted to say as in the sense of, um, I th- when you're talking about the universe, you're talking about the mind. When you talk you got about it. I mean, uh, in magic. Right. Well, well, in the Nation of Gods and Earth teachings, it speaks about the fact that um, that the universe spans 76 quintillion miles in diameter. That is the equivalent of the space in which that the mind spans also. So the mind and the universe actually are one. There is no difference between the mind and the universe. Except you've been relegated down to only utilizing ten percent of the universe, hence the mind. While there's other ninety percent of it in which that goes unseen according to quantum physicists, in which that you can also tap into. This is what we were talking about earlier. We are also gonna to go to the line. We have um a question from three one four, area code three one four, you're on the air. Peace. 
It's Islam. Peace and honor to you, more. I'm more. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing fine, more. Uh, All right. Allah, Brother Ritter Neal. Yes. Uh, uh, I was uh, listening to uh, you talking about the allegory uh, dealing with uh, certain like uh, Judaism, Islam, right. and Christianity. Right. And I was listening to a more at the Sunday school. He was talking about how uh, the Circle Seven was not an allegory book. Yes, it is. Because you can't, they can't tell me, um, they can't show me not one great site for any of those people which is mentioned in that book. If I can't go to a great site in order to see if, even if the Christians, we talking about scholars, we talking about anthropologists, and we're talking about archaeologists, they have not found out one existence of any of the people in the Bible. Exactly. No names of the people written, but they can't say who wrote those names. They can't say if Jesus wrote his name Yahshua 2,000 right. years ago. Exactly. Right. So uh, they have not found one shred of evidence to prove the existence well, the, it, of the scriptures. So that is a, frig, um, a figment of their imagination. They are exactly. delusional. And exactly. whenever you're dealing with a delusional person, you know what I'm saying, who is a religious person, you have to leave them where they are at, and you can just help give them keys. The key which you have to give them is the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary by Charles Fillmore. Yes, sir. So uh, the Twelve Powers of Man by Charles Fillmore and Cora Fillmore. Mm-hmm. I will also give them the um, Apocrypha, or the Apocalypse, excuse me, by um, Phi Lotus. Okay. I will also give them the four Gospels esoterically interpreted by John P. Scott. I will okay. also give them the Bible myth by Darwin. I will also give them um, Ancient Egypt, the Light of the World by Gerald Massey. Yes, the Book of Beginnings by Gerald Massey. Natural Genesis by Gerald Massey. The Gerald Massey Lectures by Gerald Massey. Right. And the, myth, um, the, um, the Historical Jesus and the Mythical Christ by Gerald Massey. I will also give them the biography of Satan by Kersey Graves and the World 16 Crucified Saviors by Kersey Graves. Yes, sir. I have those books. Um, I have some of those books. Uh, right. They will also uh, well talk about how, see how, by George James. Yes, sir. By, uh, they will also talk about how uh, a Prophet Nubo Juali was supposed to be a reincarnation of Jesus. You know, I'm like, wow. You know, I'm like, well, the, what is the argument? Because the oh, man that, didn't exist, right? You know, what are you talking about? You know, I never heard uh, the prophet uh, any reading or statement where the prophet ever stated that. Well, they get that because they said the forerunner is who? Marcus Garvey, and right. Marcus Garvey was like John the Baptist. So, hence, if John the Baptist came with the baptism of water, then there would be one who comes after John the Baptist who would come with the baptism of fire, hence, who came after Marcus Garvey, hence, Prophet Noble Dwali. So, yes, in that light, this is where they get that um, connection from. However, we all can become Jesus, because that symbolizes the mastering of the breath. Yahshua, which is his actual name, all right, means Savior. Or salvation. Exactly. The Lord of salvation. Yahushua. In which that is talking about the breath of life. The breath is what saves you by merging the lower self with the higher self, hence making you immortal. Mm-hmm. Transforming you from out of your mortal state into immortality. This is the reason why it says that the adept or the revealers of light, who are the Freemasons, the children of light, mm-hmm. Freemasons, all right? This is why it says in the Holy Quran, Circle 7, that we must teach the people about the holy breath. They're not teaching the people about the holy breath. They're up in there teaching people how to praise Noble Draw Lee. They do. You're yeah, exactly, exactly right, Moore. You're exactly right. He's a universal prophet, and on your nationality card, he says that we respect all the prophets, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius. But yet, they tell you that you're not supposed to study anything outside of Moorish information. But yet, the whole book... Of the Holy Cross, Circle 7, deals with Jesus going throughout the various lands to those various religions 
and sitting under those various prophets yes, of those does. religions and studying and learning. Yes, it does. Yes, so it does. if that's not the if that's not programming, I don't know what that is. But they won't get that here. They won't get that from the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the world. We don't teach that shit. <laughs> exactly. We uh, won't mm-hmm. teach it the way in which that is it's supposed to be. We're not teaching um, from a um, religious format. And we're not confining our children's minds to um, to allegories and to metaphors. Yes, sir. And they uh, can't explain how these stories relate to the human body. No, they cannot. Uh, would you say, like, dealing with, like, like the, over the rainbow, uh, I listened to you and another brother were talking about the rainbow, the seven uh, wheel chakras, chakras, I mean, wheels of light. Uh, are those most, uh, that's synonymous with the uh, seven rainbows. Yes, that's synonymous. It was also with Joseph um, um, having his multicolored coat. If you remember that in the Old Testament, Joseph was given um, a coat by his father. Mm-hmm. In which yeah, 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 yeah. Colored. That was symbi- symbolized as um, also the renewal of the covenant. Remember, um, after the flood, the first thing in which that God gave Noah was the covenant of what? The rainbow. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That is all symbolic to the seven colors of your chakras, red, yes, orange, sir. yellow, um, green, blue, indigo, violet. Mm-hmm. Hence your yes, endocrine sir. glands, mastering of those particular glands within your body. Yes, sir. So that's why in the movie, I, I, I watch a lot of movies, t- too, for allegorical and sim- uh, symbolism. Right. And I notice uh, I Mr. watched Renee, the tape. Just hold on a second. Let the brother finish. I'm going to get to you right right in a second. Go ahead, brother. Yes. You talking to me, sir? No, I'm talking to Sister Renee in the chat room. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Raglan. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yes. well, I, I was uh, listening to the DV tape with a Sister Myra Hill, and she was talking about uh, the Wizard of Oz. And I was when you, were, you and the other brother were talking about this, uh, the rainbow and the, and the seven wheel chakras. And is that what they mean by somewhere over the rainbow? Is the uh, uh, was that, that was allegory to also to the Wizard of Oz? Right, exactly. Okay, that's what I that's what I was thinking. Right, exactly. And, and see, when, when somewhere over the rainbow, you know, symbolizes uh, once you have mastered those seven chakras, you have mastered the seven um, souls of Ra, you have mastered the seven eyes of Allah. You know, um, you have mastered these seven Elohims. Remember, the seven Elohims were the ones who created you. They was, is, and forever will be, according to the one oh ones. Well, what is these seven Elohims? These seven Elohims are talking about these seven circles of light, you know, in which that is superimposed um, and forms your endocrine gland system, which is your hormones within your body, in which that keeps your body in balance, according to Mayat. Okay. And when they get out of balance and go into chaos, you know what I'm saying, um, which becomes sakmat, you know, then you have a problem. You have an imbalance, and then you have to bring um, your body back into balance. You know what I'm saying? Find ways to bring your body back into balance because you've gotten out of the laws, you know, gotten out of tune with nature or nature. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this is what this is all symbolic to. Yes. That's what I'm about. I thought so because uh... – uh, the, the Wizard of Oz is a very allegorical movie, allegorical to the 1930s uh, Depression era. Right. And uh, uh, yeah. every year I I, I I I always watch it, you know, because it always amazed me and how that movie back in the 1939 how it went way above uh, at that time above the people's heads. Mm-hmm. They did not understand Well, they that go movie. back to that. Oh, excuse me. Um, Wait. They they go back to that in the movie The Matrix. They say, um, well, you're not, you, you better, you know, you better just sit back because we're going, you know, Kansas is going bye-bye. You know, so that's all, that could be took into the subconscious mind. But, yeah, man, there's a lot of shit in the, um, in the Wizard of Oz, you know, talking about the straw man and if I only had a brain. Yeah, exactly. Right. He can't think for himself or speak for himself. Uh, the cancer uh, going bye bye means going bye bye to a corporation. Exactly, you're okay. leaving exactly. for natural and going into a corporate status. Mm-hmm. You're now leaving your indigenous or native status and now going into a corporate artificial status. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's actually right. That's exactly what all of that means. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what I thought. That's exactly where I was going with that. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to confirm that with you. Uh, <clears throat> dealing with uh, the, the tornado, when a tornado came, when the movie, when the house, when Dorothy went into the house, and the house, uh, uh, the tornado took the house up into the air, and then when it dropped, in the land of Oz, everything went into color. And I wanted to that, as that's referred to as color by law. Yeah, is that okay. the thing? Color by law. That's why um, she went from a land of black and white, you know, which was symbolic to Constitution, you know, because um, what what is it that forms the Constitution of your physical body? You know what I'm saying? What is the what 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 is the colors of, um, within your brain? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Is um, you have white matter and you have dark matter. Okay. In your brain, you know. So you know, hence you know, gray and white, you know, or black and white, I should say. So that's what that is all symbolic to. And then she gets switched, you know, um, um, switched away by a tornado in which that takes her into um, colorable status. And the first person that she meets on the yellow brick road, which is symbolic to gold, is the straw man. Right. And which that helps her to get to the Emerald City. The straw man. What was the name of the city again? Emerald City. Emerald in other words, the city. Federal Reserve Bank. Part. Right. It's Emerald about City. Bank. And then she meets the Tin Man, taxpayer identification number. Okay. In other words, your Social Security card. So hence, your birth certificate she meets first, the straw man. Then she meets um, the Social Security card. And then she meets the cowardly lion. Because now, since they got you, now you you afraid. Wow. Now, who's the, now what's the, what's the cowardly lion symbolic to? Well, what's the symbol of the lion of Judah? Even in Ethiopia, if it's symbolic to um, a lion, their flag used to have the lion on it. Okay. You know, which symbolized sure. the lion of Judah. You know, uh-huh. or, um, um, but yet, now the lion of Judah, which are talking about the real Jews or Hebrews or Israelites, are now scared. These Moors are now scared because hmm. they've now been put in color, colorful status. They now have birth certificates. They now have social security cards. And they don't know how to control this now. But yet, you have the magic in order to go home the whole time. All you have to right. do is you know, ruby slippers, which actually in the original story of Frank Brown, um, Frank Brown actually was silver. Okay. In which that you, all you had to do was click your silver heels together three times, and you can go home. Uh, three times. Now, that, 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 that's symbolic to... That's one. masonry. That's Masonic. Three times. Have to, okay. Just ask when you question. want to get into the lodge, you have to knock three times, don't you? Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. Exactly. Uh, Same thing with uh, the Moore's uh, Temple when they uh, start right. the services. They knock they, uh, the chairman or the governor. They knock three times with the gavel. Right. Or I mean, that's what the judge do in court. Sure does. Who is a mason or a shriner? Do the okay. same thing. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and then... They had to go down the yellow big road, which was symbolic to the gold, all right? And um, they had to go to the Emerald City, who controlled the gold, and they had to go talk to the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz had a whole lot of bark, but no bite. Yeah, they sure how they showed that was because they said Toto, which symbolized the total or the sum. Okay, because... What, what mm-hmm. does the word wizard mean exactly? The word wizard? wise one. I would right, say wise one. Wise one. That's yeah. what I thought. That's right. what I thought. No, Oz wise means strength. One. Right. Power. Oz means strength or power. Okay. Strength. Right. Oz means power or strength. Exactly. So the wise one of power, the wizard of Oz. So, mm-hmm. but Toto exposes him. This so-called wise wizard of power or strength. And exposes him. Right. He sure did. All right. Toto, once again, is total. T-O-T-O is T-O-T-A-L. Total. Okay. Sum. S-U-M. All mm-hmm. right. And wish that what is the um, Emerald City in this story actually based upon? Bluff. Okay. No real substance. So total, total summed it all up when he was exposed. Summed it all up. We got the straw man, <laughs> man lion, wow. tin man, and here go the Wizard of Oz, which has no substance because we just walked on the yellow brick road to get here. Yeah, exactly. 
Especially it's always been under the feet of the people. Okay, so the Wizard of Oz, when they exposed them, it showed that the courts and all that, the power structure that this so-called government has or it has over the people, it's, they're just blowing a lot of hot air. Exactly. They really don't have any real power over us. No, they don't, because they don't have any substance. They so don't even have the gold that was that. once enforced not. Guess who got that gold? The Queen of England has that gold in the Bank of London. Okay. This is why they had to go and confiscate the gold from Saddam Hussein and was looking for the gold from um, Gaddafi. This okay. is why Utah just recently said that they're going to accept silver and gold once again as currency. Because this has to get back from out of the color law status back into lawful status. Okay. In other words, real law. Back to the constitutional flow of government. Right. Okay, because like I say, like when they exposed them, they said that, well, well that, uh, that showed that they never did have any power over you, no way. That was the whole point. And then, as you've seen, once he was exposed, he had to help Dorothy get back home, remember? That's correct. So yeah. now that the Federal Reserve been exposed, what they, what's, what's their duty now is to show us? How to get this back to um, an actual un- um, unelible rights, back to an actual de jure government instead of a de facto government. Well, I know she uh, went to the uh, what's called the Witch of the West, wasn't she? Right. Well, no, not the Witch of the East, I think, wasn't she? No, we, we in the Witch, Wicked Witch of the West. This is the Western Hemisphere all the night. Okay. Yeah. Remember, the house fell on the Wicked, the wicked Witch, Witch of the East. Okay. In other words, the, the house fell on the um, Queen of England. Okay, right, right. Okay, I got you. But her sister still existed. The wicked witch of the West. That's right. So, so did the good witch Glenda okay. too? Because she had the white. Garment right. So on. you had a good witch and you had a bad witch. Yeah. The bad witch was looking to get them damn ruby slippers back from Dorothy because she took her from off the feet of the wicked witch of the East. Okay. In other words, she took the emeralds, uh, not the emeralds, but the um, the treasures. The which, is which, was the, which was the substance. Right, something of substance. She wore that on her feet. I got you. That was her foundation. The something of substance is actually is you because you are being traded on the stock market as commodity. You are exactly. substance. Exactly. Because the reason why Dorothy, Dorothy was young, she symbolizes innocence. Right. And this is why you, and Glenda was the, was the um, good witch, which is symbolic to Wichita, or the Washita, the empress. Okay. Okay. This is what this is all symbolic to. That's why I watch that movie every year. Yeah, I'll because watch it. it's her bloodline in which that prophet number Jali comes from, in which that he was able to do the um the land grant or to put the um land in the express trust. Okay. In which that okay. is symbolic to um chapter forty seven in the Holy Quran circle seven. It was okay. that you have filed with your documentation in which that links you back to a nationality because it ties you back to land. Here's the reason why in the Black Law Dictionary, the fourth edition, it tells you about land. Um, and then when you read the definition of land, it has the word morals embedded inside of the definition because the word more and land is synonymous. Right, it is. It is. I, 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 I read that in the book called The Consumment of a Nation. Exactly. By Elihu M. Bay. Right. Elihu M. Bay. Right. Yeah, I had read that. Uh, he broke that down. Mm-hmm. I sure did. Right. So this, this, these are the keys. Because I'm really surprised that a lot of Moors don't even know what they feds mean or the tap. Right. right. Well, the only thing you have to do is go, go to um, rvbaypublications.com, and Roz and Taj has the breakdown of the feds right there, which that symbolizes the woman's womb. Okay. Yeah, exactly. The red symbolizes the um the blood. And which okay. that comes from um the womb being um um open wider by the birth of child. Okay. And this is the reason why um um they speak about the skull of the um uh, cradle cap, you know, of the um child um skull on his head. Cradle cap. Because it's also symbolic to that also. So all of this is symbolic to the crown on which they we wear, which actually is the woman's womb um, for well, the Moors on top of our heads. Of course, they want to say that the Moors 
um, vanquished their enemies, and um, by vanquishing their enemies during the Inquisitions and Crusades, we dipped our um, camel um, fezzes, which was brown or light brown, into the blood and made them, you know, maroon yeah. fezzes. Yeah, this I hear is that what crazy they, story, yeah. Right, this is what they claim in history, but actually the whole time it symbolizes the woman's womb. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I also heard a story about um, the creation of life as in uh, the spider web. Somebody told me something about that. Uh, yeah, that's a Nancy. A Nancy is the spider, in which that um, symbolic to the string theory in quantum physics. Whenever you um, study quantum physics and read about the string theory, they're talking about vectors of lights in which that... Um, in which that light travels just like in the visible lines of latitude and longitude, in which that is utilized on Earth, uh, which produces the energy grids, you know, or the ley lines of the planet. This is also found in space, in which that um, will call um, the web of Anansi. She spun her web and formed the universe, or the glue of the universe, which actually the glue of the universe in which that ties everything together, actually a dark matter. Mm, wow. Exactly. So that is a Nancy, the spider, all right? That is according to the mythology of the Africans, in which that once you get of age, then they explain all this mythology to you. But, of course, as a child, you're going to believe it's a spider because you see the spider putting together the web. But that web symbolizes the ley lines of the universe, or what is known as the string theory. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Are we supposed to keep believing in uh, Nancy the Spider, or are we going to understand that the Spider was symbolic to Prana or Chia Key Energy, in which they have formed the universe into existence and hold it together as the glue, which is melanin or dark matter? Mm -hmm. Right. Are we going exactly. to keep believing in these stories, or are we going to explain them? We're going to explain them. Exactly. That's what we're going to bring them down and bring them down to the science. What are we going to do, brother? And the Matrix was actually very close to uh, uh, Wizard of Oz, and they connect those two in the movie. Right. Okay, I'm going I'm to I'm start watching the Matrix, all three of them. I'm start yeah, watching they, they've been on, actually, uh, yeah, last night, and they're showing the trilogies tonight as well. Okay, I'm going to start watching those. Because okay. I, 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 only, I only paid half attention to them, because right. I always had something to do. Right. But so I always got in my way from watching it. Right. But after now, I'm going to definitely concentrate on, on those three movies. No doubt about it. Check them out. All right. Yeah. Brother, we're going to get on to the next question here. I got this question in the chat room. And, um, yes, um, Juma um, does deal with um, Friday. Matter of fact, it, it, it says Juma means born on Friday or a holy day in the Islamic um, religion. However, um, Juma also means silver or pearl in which that symbolizes element, and the element in which that is talking about is actually carbon, all right? Um, so that is also an element. So when we talk about Juma, it has this correlation back to an element anyway, and you can look that up in, order, um, um, in Arabic as well as in Swahili, all right? So um, do your research on that, and you see that it goes back to an element, um, you know. Yes, sir. We'll right. do. Hell. Yeah. Yes, uh, um, um, mm -hmm. I did. You, you, you shown some light on me on Juma, uh, Friday. Uh, right. I know for prayer. Right. But because that's the that's far they went with it and defining it. You know. Well, Adam was formed on Friday, according to Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. But the formation actually is the element carbon. So which that's is this, why. Which is the, which symbolizes the sixth day. Okay. This is why it says that God rested on the seventh day, because on the sixth day he formed man, which is a carbon being. So, so that further defines why uh, the more science temples hold their meetings on Fridays. Exactly. Okay. And why Muslims um, hold their um, Juma on Friday, which is around 1 o'clock, because they say that, Man was created Friday at 1 o'clock. Okay. The one symbolizes the first man, or one. Okay. And which that extends from the first element, which is hydrogen. The first element, hydrogen, okay. Which is they all, Okay, they always talk about the four elements, earth, air, and fire, water all the time. Right. But they never talk about the other elements. Right. Well, you well go, I mean, 
if you go to chemistry yeah. class, um, they have the whole periodical chart there, which is over 108 elements. You know, um, matter of fact, it's up to 118, if not more, elements nowadays. Some are man-made, but the majority of them are all found in nature, mm. in which that the sixth element on the periodical chart is carbon. Six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Okay. Which is the what is called the mark of the beast or the wisdom. Here's wisdom. Here's um, wisdom of um, of man, according to the book of Revelation. I think it's the Revelation, the thirteenth chapter, where it speaks about the wisdom of man and he who can decode basically the um, the number six six six. And that's what we have done. We've decoded the number six 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 because it's carbon, the sixth element on the periodical chart, which is symbolic to Adam. And, and, and somehow that that turned into uh, uh, pan. That turned into pan, as in people looking at a beast, and they were like, "Oh, well, you know, let's see, yeah. let's see what looks like a beast." And you know, you get this goat imagery, and they tie that back to Baphomet, and they say Baphomet is symbolic to pan. And the great God pan. You look at a, okay. Yeah, exactly. And so that is is straight nonsense. Because it's actually wisdom. It's something that you should learn and you need to learn because it's talking about the physical body. And that correlates to Friday the 13th, they thought we were talking about, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah right. So Friday the 13th. Um, even now, they still buildings in which they have to design in which they do not have the 13th floor in it. I know my mom lived in a building in New York that do not have a 13th floor. They're still superstitious about that. And with that, if you go and um, do the research on the number thirteen, it actually means a new beginning. That's what I've that's what I've I've I've, I've learned. Yeah. Right. That's so, why they have the revolution and the mm-hmm. thirteen, 13 colonies. Right. Because they knew what they were doing. Right. Uh, now, how I you was, thirteen colonies or the what becomes the thirteen states, and then all of a sudden, um, the number thirteen becomes negative. But yet, you teach us about the thirteen colonies in school. Well, I know yeah, the Confederate exactly. flag has 13 stars, it had 13 but they only stars. have 11 states. They only had 11 states. Right, and the original um, so-called Star Spangled Banner only had 13 stars. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is the nonsense. We said, going matter of fact, when you, um, you know, on the back of the dollar bill, um, the star above the um, eagle's head only got 13 stars. Okay. You know, so these are things in which that we have to look at and um, decode once again, because these are Masonic slash Rosicrucian slash the ancient mysteries of the Herbach teachings in which that they have um, accumulated, and now they are distributing that information um, as misinformation and disinformation, you know, um, in order to keep a lot of us off the tracks, in order to get us caught up into the allegories and get us caught up into thinking that it's something literal, when actually... Um, we're supposed to be decoding these ancient mysteries. Okay. All right. All right, brother. Um, brother L, we're gonna go. We're gonna um, go to another caller here. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Thank peace, you. All right. Caller three two one. Area code three two one. You on the line? Three two one. Area code three two one. You here? Hello. Hello. Yes, peace. Peace. How you doing, brother? All right. Peace. How you doing, brothers? Be doing good. How are Dragon, you? Man. I'm good, brother. Yeah, you was going in heavy on the a pyramid building, and then I thought I just thought you'd go over that again because that was just, that was just going in for real. Yeah. Well, according to the you know um, on the books and everything. Right. Well, according to um the books, um you can get the Serious Mysteries by Robert Temple. You can also get um, Serious Connections by um, Robert, um, by um, Murray. Um, you can also get um, Ancient Light of Egypt, or Ancient Egypt, the Light of the World, excuse me, by Gerald Massey. And you will find out that the Dogons and the Pygmies are actually the builders of the pyramids. Those were shown in the movie in the movie The Mummy, I believe. Right. The pygmies were those little, you know, um, the little tribe running around, and uh, I believe the Moors uh, were the ones with the red bandana. I think. Right. And all. So, uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, hello. Yes, yeah, we here. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. 
so yeah, that, definitely. Mm, so that's the science, I girls. Um, you go back and check eight thousand years ago, six thousand BC, you will find that um, um, based on a great migration and based on invasions, um, you have the Pygmies and the um, who were known as the Twa people and the Dogon to leave from out of Egypt, and the Pygmies went, which is the Twa, went deeper into um, Uganda and the Congo, Central Africa, and then you had the Dogons, who was the um, astrologist, the priesthood, to go further west into Mali, and this is where they reside at today. Indeed, yeah. That's okay. Good. You said the books are ancient mysteries and ancient uh, connections. What was the other, second book you gave? Ancient Egypt, the Light of the World by Gerald Massey. Ancient Egypt, the Light uh, of the World by Gerald Massey. Uh, no, nah, you gave another book. Uh, Serious mysteries. Serious yes. mysteries and the serious connection. Serious mysteries is by Robert Temple, and Serious mysteries is by Murray M U R R A Y. Yeah. There was Definitely. there was a book that you recommended to me, Aleem, um, a while back. I think it was uh, Decoding Hieroglyphics by, I believe, Dr. Muwada Ashby. Right. That might Ashby be something else you want to check out. Right. That teaches the Metuneta. You know, even though it is stated that the Metuneta, according to Professor um, Walter Williams, he said that no one has never decoded um, those symbols. But um, I think it gives a good illustration if you read the various books based from um, Wallace E. Butch, um, um in his book about the hieroglyphics as well as also um, Ancient Egyptian um, for Beginners by Muata Ashby as well as also Raul Nefa Amin's um, information. Um, I think we would get somewhat close to that information as far as um, the linguistics you know, because yeah. um, a lot of this information is once again is encoded in our DNA. Ashwa Kwesi always speaks about the ancestral data bank, in which that is our genes, our DNA. And I know that it is within us to um, decode these mysteries because we are the descendants of these people. It just doesn't make sense. That means that these energies and these concentrations of these people still exist within us today. Yeah. It, it makes up our DNA coding. And these voices in which that sometimes we hear within our heads actually are them trying to convey those messages to us. He said we have to learn how to tap into the Akashic Records, which is the Universal Library. Exactly. All right, so um, we're going to go on to the next question here. Thank you, brother. Definitely. Peace. Yeah. Peace. All right, we got area code 302. 302, area code. Oh, Peace. Peace is wrong. Peace, you What's up? Peace, this is Brother Messiah. How you doing, Ali? Hey, peace. Doing good, brother. All right. Um, my question is, just said earlier, you can direct energy towards the um, intellect. What part, like, all right, if you want to get push your head, like, you, you, you would direct the energy towards, towards uh, in between your eyebrows, right? Well, right, right above your eyebrows to your hairline. Okay. Now, you should be at your hairline area. Uh, I in the beginning of, or the lowest point of, is actually at the home, um, is in between the eyebrows. Okay. All right, now let's say, like, let's say you was trying to invoke energy, like, warlike energy. Where would you direct that at? The, the, at the base chakra? Um, at the navel and the base chakra, right. That's, that's the war energy that you would need because um, that is nothing more than the extension of your life. Okay. All right, that's all I wanted to know. All right. Okay. You're going to area code 609. 609, you're on the line. Peace, peace. Peace. Uh, Dr. Peace. Aline, just uh, talking about the, uh, got a couple of questions for you, talking about those those days, uh, like when, uh, uh, how the Muslims honored the, the sixth day, uh, so, you know, in honor of Adam when he was, uh, created or whatever, uh, how do you, in just uh, esoteric understanding, how do we uh, honor, which day do we pick out the honor as far as, you know, just our whole systematic flow of, of understanding time? Because, you know, the people that, that study 
uh, you know, being a Hebrew Israelite or, or in Judaism, they honor the seventh day as the Sabbath. And if you know, coming from a Muslim understanding, you honor the sixth day. So, you know, just in understanding time and metaphysics, how do we do that based on the chakras, chakras that's in our body lined up with the earth? You know, how, how do we understand that? Which, which day did we pick the line up with? Well, that would be symbolic to um, your third eye, Ak, which is your sixth chakra. Okay. Which that once, um, actually within the occult, that's the first um, chakra which that you want to activate is actually your third eye region. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that would be all symbolic to. Okay. Just because, you know, you listen to two different types of teachers, you know, you kind of get confused with the allegories, and, you know, I'm just trying to get a better understanding as far as understanding in a metaphysical sense. Right. You know, which, which, way to, oh, uh, yeah. which way to go with that. Now, understand, that's if you're coming from one up to seven, that would be six. However, if you come down from one to seven, then that would be your right. solar plexus, not your solar plexus, but your um, navel chakra, which okay. that you absorb energy there. Remember, these okay. two areas are known as your dantians. You have your upper dantian and you have your lower dantian. All right, okay. upper Egypt and lower Egypt. And if you ever right. look um, upper Egypt and lower Egypt, you see that actually that it was reversed. Okay. On the continent of Africa, from the right. way in which that we see it. All right. And that that Egypt is not just uh, talking about just that particular area. It's talking about the whole area of Kush. Right. Right. Exactly. No doubt about okay. it. Okay. Uh, one other question I had for you is uh, talking about the, the seven colors with the rainbow. Uh, isn't that also synonymous with uh, talking about the seven bodies of man as well as the seven spirits of Elohim? Yes, yeah, same, revelation. same thing, exactly. Okay. okay. Seven frequencies, the seven Elohim. Right. Up the seven colors, the seven souls of um, Ra, the seven heavens, talking about bodies of man. Seven dragon balls, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Anything, anything with seven is usually uh goes one on one with the uh with the chakras. Usually. Okay. Right. The so seven is the holy number. You you could tap into those energies through uh Reiki or uh Tashi, right? Right. Actually, oh, yeah. what happens is that um when you work with Reiki you actually are utilizing descendant energy, which is feminine energy. And which is symbolic to love energy, Venus energy, and you're bringing that energy down from your crown to your third eye into your throat chakra, um, thymus gland, heart, um, down into your solar plexus, navel, genitals, knees, um, ankles, feet, um, you know, um, small of the back area right above the crack behind to your kidneys. And back to the back of your head, which is all talking about 16 positions in which that you would do in order to relieve stress and create hormonal balance within your body. So um, Reiki is definitely used in order to bring about stress relief, um, promote right. longevity, and promote health. Okay. All right? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We got wow. area code 404. 404, you're on the air. Peace and blessings, brother. Brother, blessings, Zach. How are you, brother Dwayne? Yeah, I'm pretty Peace, good, brother. I'm not going to complain. Um, what I would like to say to you is I had an experience, and uh, you know uh, parallel universes and different planes of existence. Um, mm -hmm. There are some, uh, let's just say, uh, we're going to talk about some herbal extracts. So I'll just say herbal extracts that will honestly take you. I had an experience here uh, about a week or so ago, and uh, I thought that I was would be able to, you know, uh, I guess I should say uh, I got afraid after the process started. When I say I got afraid, uh, uh, I would like to say that it was a situation where you somewhat went, uh, I guess, the third eye or your penile gland would open up in a way that you would travel and then get to a particular place. And I don't know, for some reason, I guess, um, when you're not familiar with certain things or familiar with certain planes of existence, they might frighten you. But I can honestly say that uh, I just want to know if there's anyone in your audience that may have experienced 
to other dimensions of ex- you know or planes of existence because it was really something that um is something that um is kind of sticking with me and I want to take it to another level. But have you heard anyone or do you know of anyone that has been able through certain uh, I guess herbal extracts or whatever to go to those particular planes of existence? Yes, um, basically what um, those certain herbs do, such as marijuana. Um, such as um, something that's even more, 70% even more potent than marijuana, which is called the Tabernathi or Booga plant from out of West Africa. is a tr- um, and, um, Actually, is a, um, from a tree, um, okay. which that you make into a tea, and you uh-huh. drink um, one cup, and actually you will have out-of-body experience. As well as also, there's another herb, um, which is actually um, a mushroom, in which that grows within cow dung, in which it has red, and, um, which is red and white. It has red spots on it, and um, you can actually um, use that, and it promotes DMT, which is supposedly only produced in the body at birth and at death. But actually, you can make DMT produce while living, and it comes through heavy meditation, and these particular herbs can actually help with that. Yeah. This is why they had marijuana illegal for all these years, because it actually was helping tap into that. You know, okay. now that it's become, um, you know, now that they have gained control of the industry and they have changed it up, because I'm sorry, the marijuana that I'm smelling nowadays don't smell shit like what I grew up smelling. Right, right. <laughs> I can actually agree with that. Well, basically, since you had already mentioned it, I didn't really want to say, but the herbal extract is the DMT, and it can be extracted from uh, the mimosa hostilis. Right. Plant. Right. So, from the right. Exactly. Exactly. What I want to say, brother, if you're not ready <laughs> to make that journey, if you're not, I guess if your mind isn't in condition to make that journey, it will somewhat frighten you, but I think that's an experience that, um, that when you do experience it's a life changing experience and I think that's one of the reasons probably why they you know, the powers that be don't really want people uh, indulging in these things because um uh, I've heard several uh stories from different people and uh, most of them are, are relevant to the same type of situations that, that go on with it. But it tells you about your uh I've heard someone say that it allows you to reach your oversoul I've heard uh, people coming out of uh, out of the situation crying, uh, really realizing what their life purpose is all about, what's going on right. around them, and I just think that uh, uh, it's more study. I'm, I'm I'm curious to see. I find that a lot of Caucasian people, a lot of um, that are mostly the ones who are involved, but I want to know if there is anyone. Who's experienced, and you know, I, I don't want to be sounding racist or anything, but I don't hear many of our people. I don't know whether or not they have their access to it, but I think right. it's well, there's a difference between astral travel, which happens at the solar plexus, and soul travel, which happens okay. at the top of the head from the pineal gland. Okay. All right, when you soul travel, you actually hear like a loud popping noise when the soul um, comes out of the um, body. Now, right. at the, now at the um, astral travel. Um, which is the astral projection, all that happened at the soul at the solar plexus, in which that um, you know you can actually um, come up out of your body and it feels as if you're floating, and um, I yeah. mean done both, you know, um, in meditations. So I know exactly what you're talking about, but what you're talking about is soul travel, which is the highest component of astral travel. Astral travel will only have you at the astral plane, being able to project. Um, however, soul travel, you are able to go from the physical, the ethereal, the astral, which is the emotional, the mental, the causal, the spiritual, and the soul plane. Well, I can say this much. Um, there was a, for some reason, uh, a door that opened. Uh, it starts with multiple colors, uh, like your rainbow, all of those. you saw. I saw all of those type of things, and then it everything got condensed, and then it was something like a, I saw uh, maybe a black hand or a shadow-type hand open a door. And for some reason, my mind was telling me I was seeing a African female beckoning me to come in. But when it got to that point, it was just a little too, it was a little too much for my conscience at the particular time, and I kind of just kind of 
back down. You know, they was like, close your eyes. And the more I closed my eyes, the more I saw geometrical shapes. I saw uh, just like a, well, I'm basically shooting off into the, to, uh, to the universe and to different galaxies. So when you're talking about the universe being mine, I've experienced that, and I want to kind of take it a step further. And when I do, I will be glad and happy to share some of my experiences. If you have any other callers, anyone else that there that is with you that maybe can shed some light who have had that particular experience, then um, I'd like to hear from them. All right. Thanks, Brother Dwayne. Um, we got another yeah. call. So this might be who you might want to hear from. So let's go to um, area code 407, area code 407. You're on the line. Peace to all the gods and all the earths out there, the gods and the goddesses. This is Isaac. He's How you Isaac. doing, Isaac? Brother Isaac? All right, all right. Hey. Oh, 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 yeah. I don't really know what he talking about. <laughs> Astro plane, <laughs> and yeah, I'm still, I'm still working on trying to get these blocks out of the way. You know, I used to do it when I was younger, man. But you know how, kind of got caught up in the, the reprogramming. So I'm trying to return. Well, actually, I'm on my way to return to the default, you know, the default, the original. But I, I had a question, though, man. Um, I, I've been doing this, This uh, I don't know if it's considered yoga, uh, what they call it, the five Tibetan rites. Right. And I was just wondering, do, do, do you know anybody that, that uh, ever uh, practiced, practiced this? Yes. Have I'm... you ever practiced it? Yes, I have, and um, up on the sun, you have to say and yes, it does help clear energy blockages. Yes. Okay, yeah, because that's me. That's me. I'm laughing here, yeah, laughing 13, you know. Uh, I figured uh, that. I'm, I'm, about I'm sorry, man. I just, got, I just, you know, when people try to come with that fear fight and stuff, man, I just started to clown. That's all. I mean, you got to just excuse me for that. <laughs> No problem. Uh, you know, because I, I just don't take it serious, man. You know, um, <laughs> we, we're not supposed to. That's that's the whole point. Now, uh, spookism, you know, you know um, what everything is, and now you know that um, you ain't got to be afraid of um, everything in which that you was told in Christianity or Islam or Judaism. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the jinns, they're going to get you when the jinns is nothing more than your genes. Wow, see. The DNA. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> see, these, these are the things in which that, which is your ancestors. So that means that you are being plagued by your ancestors. You know what I'm saying? When they when they say those types of things. So th- I mean, this is the nonsense in which that um you know that that we have to go through, you know, based on people who are religious instead of being spiritual. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, man. I just want to thank you too for the religious, you know, the the uh, uh, the Morris Heritage boy. You a hey, boy, you you be going in on YouTube, man. What? Look at him. Yeah, I got. I, I really appreciate it, man. You know, it's it's, it's just. It's, I don't know how you do it as far as you squeeze so much information in that you know out in just that that short amount of time, man. But you got it. On, you got that that method locked, right there. I don't know how you do it, but woo. <laughs> I'm, appreciate I'm really grateful, man. I'm grateful, man. I, I you know I can't express it enough, man. I appreciate what you and um with the queen, you know right. what y'all offer. You know? All right, hey, we we grateful that you are listening. Got something to say? We appreciate y'all too. There we go. All right. Um, We got another call here. Thanks, bro. You got area code 205. 205. Area code. You on the line? In the building. How you doing now? Peace. Yep. You in the building. All right, bro. This is Tom calling from Birmingham, Alabama. Yes. And um, I'm, I'm, I've been listening to you for a while here now, and I, I was just trying to get some info on. Um, I, I heard you once before one of your talk shows talking about how I could purify myself as far as detoxing, you know, as far as cleaning out, you know, my insides. That way, you know what I'm saying, I, I kind of suffer with a weight problem. And uh, so you kind of give me a brief description of what I could use, some, some herbs or anything. Right. The herbs in which uh, that you need is kelp. K E L P, Irish sea moss. That's I R I S H. Irish sea moss. S E A moss. M O S S. Okay. E D D. W R A C K. Bladder rack. Those three together in conjunction will actually make you lose weight and actually tone up your endocrine gland system. 
In other words, it would make your metabolism increase because that is extended from your thyroid glands and your parathyroid glands, in which that controls the weight, um, in particular the fat distribution in your body. Okay, then. Okay, then. Now, now that last one that you that you said. Bladder rack. B l a d d e r w r a c k. Bladder rack. Bladder rack. Okay, then, bro. Okay. Right. Those in conjunction together will um, make you lose weight, as well as tone up your endocrine glands and purify your system. Get rid of toxins you and poisons it. also, because the thyroid gland also deals with the removal of infections. So once that is toned then actually there can't be infections in your body. And that's one of the things in which that we all have to work on, especially now with um, these chemtrails and different other um, um, freaking foods and different other things being thrown at us. That's right. That's right, bro. Yeah. I'm, a tr- I'm a truck driver, man. It's, you know, it's hard to put my hands on, you know, good, healthy foods, man. I'm, I'm faced with all this garbage on the road, man. It's, it's real, real hard, to, you know, and I don't do nothing but ride. I, I try to, like you said, listen to you and try to control my breathing. Just certain things, just I'm limited, you know, trying to stay, you know, stay ahead of the game, you know, and, you know, and, and, and stay focused on my consciousness. And, you know, it's just a lot going on right now. And I, like I said, I ride and listen to your blog, talk all the time, man. It's so inspirational, man. And I just want to give a shout-out to you and your queen, man. Keep, keep up the good work, man. I really appreciate it because, it inspired me, man, to keep on, keep on to what I'm doing. All right, well, we appreciate you for listening. And also, you can get the herbs from us. We do have a herbal store. Um, we also have our website, www.cultural-freedom.com. That's www.cultural-freedom.com. As well as also, um, our number is 252-257-3588. So for any herbal remedies, you can definitely get in contact with us, as well as also um, for those who want to learn about the online classes as far as our alternative healing, and we say we teach herbology and herbalism, as well as Reiki, pranic healing, Qigong, Tai Chi, um, as well as um, acupressure and reflexology and irisology. We teach all of these particular arts, as well as also certify um, people within these particular sciences after three months. And you can actually hit me at my email that's Healing Wings Online at Yahoo dot com. That's H E A L I N G W I N G S online O N L I N E at Yahoo dot com. All right, thanks, oh, bro. Okay, thank you, okay. bro. Peace out here. You, I'll have a good one. You too. Peace, Jeff. Yeah. All right, I got two announcements to make. In which that one is the tribute to the Empress, Empress Vidyasi, Tierra Washington, Turnica, Gaston L. Bay. Of the Washtor Deduct the Munya, the Empire Washtor Deduct the Munya, and um, it's the return of ancestral values. And we have a two day conference coming up June 22nd to 23rd, 2012, um, in Los Angeles at Carson, um, California, um, outside of Los Angeles, I should say, in which that is going to be at the Double Tree um, Hotel. And you need to make your reservations today. And the number to make your reservations or call more about the information actually is 818-793-8952. Or you can go to the website, www.EmpressWashington.com. That's E, oh, excuse me, EmpireWashington.com. That's E-M-P-I-R-E-W-A-S-H-I-T-A-W.com. So www.EmpireWashington.com. And we're going to have um, um, international speakers and presenta- um, presenters, um, or presenters um, and entertainment and much more to come. But we have now Renoka Rashidi. He's going to be there as well as um, Aaron Darnell Spears of NCIS, Castle Bones, um, Castle Bones, Shark, and the CBS series Criminal Minds. He's going to be there, as well as also um, Sister Sa T, and she's going to be there with her dance and secret movement art. And there's many more to come, and that is this June 22nd, 23rd, 2012, and it's going to be outside of Los Angeles in Carson, California. Um, in which that is um, at the Double Tree Hotel, and that's where the conference is going to be at. 
And then we also have um, the Monarch of the Seas coming up. It's going to be January the 14th through the 18th, 2013. And this is going to be Monday through Friday. And um, it's going to be 100%, you know, um, it's going to be the 100th founding anniversary of Prophet Noble Jali of the old Canaanite temple formed in 1913 and the um, Moorish New Year's cruise. All right, it's going to be um, right. four night um, Bahamas cruise, and we're going to visit Nassau and Coco Cay, and uh, it's going to be four course meals nightly um, at 8:30, and it's going to be with myself, Grand Sheik um, Dr. Aline Bay, and Grand Sheik um, Davis White Bay, and um, we um, the brothers putting this together along with Sister Alicia um, Keir. And you can actually get in contact with her at 770-485-8065, and you can check us out on that cruise. We're going to blow it up. If you think they'll be doing something here on um, our talks, you know what I'm saying, on our blog talk, or if you might have seen my videos um, or YouTube um, clips and you think they'll be doing something on those, then you not you haven't seen nothing yet. I advise you to come on and check this out, all right? Um, the interior rooms are four hundred and forty one dollars and forty five cents per person. And the ocean um view rooms are four hundred and eighty one dollars and forty five um cents per person. So check us out, the monarchs of the sea. Um we're gonna blow it up. Um I think y'all really wanna check this out. Once again the number is seven seven zero four eight five eight zero six five and that's sister Alicia. All right. Um check us out, y'all. Um but Mike, you got any um thing else you want to drop on before we get up off of here? Uh yeah. How how much uh, more time do we have? Man, shoot, we got another half an hour. But you you go on and do your thing. What you got? Oh okay. I wanted to say it, it's funny that I'm you know uh, co-hosting the show with you today because last night I had a dream that I was in your library. Oh word! <laughs> here we go. And you are in the yeah. library because this is being recorded. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, and what happened was, I, I don't know, I was picking up, um, I don't know, there's books on Qigong, uh, Soul Track. It, it was like, when I was in there, I was so happy because it was like, man, I go to Barnes & Noble, you know, there's definitely information there. But there was just um, all this, you know, conscious absorbing from being in that library. It's just like all these different... I felt like, like you know, Neo, you know, like when he was learning Kung Fu, but all he had to do was take, like, a program, and he could do it for, like, you know, 10 hours, and he mastered it. Yes, and, and people That's, do like Morpheus, so, yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's that how I felt. <laughs> but, I mean... Yo, I, I mean, I mean, it's funny because I, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a man, but it's like someday I'm like, yo, can I just come over or something? You know? <laughs> right, right, no doubt. You know, right. I, definitely, um, can come and check me out, and you can definitely check out the library. You know what I mean? No doubt. But um, be getting ready to go. First one on the radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the essay that you're 
thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Word. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of the ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. <laughs>